All right, everybody, we're doing Sunday book review again. This time we're reviewing the book, The Horse Confirmation Handbook. Um, I really like this book. I like this book a lot, actually, for uh, so many different reasons. Um, but the first thing I should probably start off with uh, is, is discussing just a little bit of what horse confirmation is and then a little bit of why you should know more about horse confirmation. Uh, first thing first, horse confirmation is all about the bones and muscles, tendons and ligaments, and how they're all put together on the horse that defines how they stand, walk, trot, canter, gallop, move around, jump, everything that they do. Um, it can affect their balance, it can affect, the, it can affect their performance, it can affect their lifespan, it can affect whether or not um, they're going to be able to survive in a herd, whether or not they can run quickly, uh, eat properly, all kinds of things. The confirmation of a horse is very, very important. And unfortunately, it's very, very involved. There's a lot of things to think about from the feet up the leg, shoulders, you know, the if you go on the back end, you go to the hocks, you go to the, the stifle, you go to their spine, you go to their neck, you go to their, everything about them can inhibit or enhance some portion of their performance or just their life. Um, so you'd want to know this stuff, not maybe if you have just a pasture pet, but if you plan on riding, if you plan on teaching a horse how to ride, if you plan on training a horse, if you plan on doing any jumping, if you plan on doing any trail riding, anything that involves anything more than maybe just being a pasture horse, uh, you're going to kind of want to know what's going on with your horse uh, in case they have any problems. You might be able to trace it back to something. These, these situations come up a lot where there's something going on with the horse and you can't pinpoint it until you take a closer look at how their body is moving and how they've been maybe um, getting along with a problem and you haven't noticed it uh, until now, until you push something brand new on them. And, uh, and, and that might require doing something extra. And we've talked about it before. We talked about massage stuff. We talked about horsemanship stuff uh, in other Sunday book reviews here. So um, those are some of the topics you'd get into after figuring out if there's a problem. But the confirmation and understanding how to recognize good and bad confirmation um, is really important. So that brings me to the book, The Horse Confirmation Handbook. This is written by a lady named Heather Smith Thomas. Um, I didn't really know who she was before I uh, read the reviews. My, I mean, I read the reviews on Amazon on these things as well before I buy them. Turns out she's written a couple other books and she seems to know a lot of what she's talking about. So um, a good source of information and you can tell by the thickness of this book it is 400 pages or so almost 375 or so, 375 pages of chock-a-block full of information um, about uh, uh, confirmation. There are some pictures in here for sure, but she does a lot of, or I don't know if she does them, but there are a lot of sketches in here as well. Um, and they're very, very well done. All, all from bones and, and muscles, or the bones and the muscles and, and, and the body types. Um, to uh, um, you know, real, really interesting looking. Let's see if I can bring up a couple of these pages here. Uh, uh, understanding the gait of the horse and how they should be walking through sketches, which is then they're very, very well done. I like them because pictures can sometimes draw you away from the subject if there's a, something going on in the background and stuff. But sketches are just straight sketches, and they're on white and you can really hone in. I like that a lot myself. You may not, I do. I think it's actually a bonus of this book that they've used sketches instead of pictures in some of the examples here. So let's talk about what's in this book. Um, it's a pretty hefty book and it does take a while to get through. I like to use this book more as a reference rather than a read from beginning to end book. Um, we do a lot of studying around here on, on how hooves and the legs affect the rest of the body. When you start making changes down here, how does it affect up here? If you make changes up here, is it going to affect down there when they start, you know, walking? And how must you make changes between the two? So that's a lot of what we do here. Um, not to say that that's what you do, but you may be thinking, 
the same kind of thing. So there's three sections in this book. <clears throat> I'm going to go over them quickly. The first one, most important, and I would say, you know, even through the other books that I've gone through, when it comes to understanding the biology of a horse, you've got to start talking about the anatomy and the principles, in this case, of confirmation, but the principles of, of how everything is put together and why it does what it does. Without that understanding, um, it's like doing math without really understanding plus, minus, divide, and multiply. Um, you know, you just kind of going through the motions. When you understand those, you can start putting the numbers together at any point. Doesn't matter. So uh, I like that a lot. That, that's how I teach. That's how I uh, learn best. I learn off the concepts and the very basics of how to put it together later. If somebody gives me methods on the better way to put things together, uh, then I'll give that a go too, of course. You know, same thing with math. If I said add 56 plus 23 you might start thinking okay 56 plus 23 is 79 it is but some people might go you know 60 plus 23 right and then they'll minus four so there's lots of ways to do math okay um so the first part is the anatomy and the principles of confirmation talking about every part of it the basic anatomy um, the neck, the, the head, the teeth uh, goes down to chest, back, foreleg, hind leg, hind quarters, and feet. So talking about all those bits and pieces and puts it all together later in part two in evaluating a horse, which is another good reason to know about confirmation. If you're going to buy a horse, you're really, really, really going to want to know whether or not that horse has good confirmation. I see it all the time. People show up or you know, or I, or I, I meet people, new people, you know, and there's, there's nothing against them. There's no judgment. But when I look at a horse and I see, oh, you know, there's, there's a problem. Maybe the, maybe the horse paddles when it runs, you know, when it trots or canters or uh, one of its back leg twists every time it, it takes a walk or when it lands, it lands with an outward foot or the, the front feet are imbalanced inside or they come out wide. And there's all kinds of things that you look at and you think, ah, that's going to be trouble later. Um, and it's really hard to recognize these things. So again, I'd say no judgment because you really do have to study um, a lot of good horses and a lot of bad horses, meaning just confirmation, not that they're good or bad horses, um, to get an idea of what, what it should look like. And that's going to change on breed as well. So you got to have a decent understanding of that too. So evaluating a horse, understanding if you're going to buy one, if you're going to ride one, you're going to be able to evaluate your own horse. Is your horse healthy? I mean, did, did it get injured while out playing with some friends in the past or something like that? Um, all of these kinds of things. So when evaluating a horse, you're looking at the body proportions. So, you know, the, the neck length, there's a very specific length that is very good for shows, very good for reining and cutting, very good for jumping, very good for endurance, very good for each one of these things. And the proportions generally get sort of broken up between neck and body, um, and then leg length kind of idea. So you're going to want to know that the body angles, all the angles of, of how the legs are standing, how the pasterns are, how does the shoulder go, how does the hindquarters go here and then down the to stifle down to the hawk down the pastern to the hoof uh, all of these things are super important if you want especially if you want the most high perform performance horse and the healthiest horse there are um, norms out there to be followed that will give you a very good idea um, of what's quite healthy so uh, the angles the height uh, talking about how a horse moves you know that's really important um, its athletic ability and, and, and soundness, whether or not it's got a limp, whether uh, it's compensating for something, because sooner or later that'll really affect the horse down the road uh, because it'll be constantly compensating for something. So it might have a high shoulder or, uh, you know, it might have sort of a twisted back or it might have a, an arched back, uh, all kinds of things to think about. And, um, and finally, finishing that section off with uh, the senior horse. As our horses tend to get older and they live longer, um, when they get beyond, say, 22 or so, I mean, if they're, if they're not, I don't know a lot of race horses that really make it past their 20s uh, too well, but a, a regular horse, a regular riding horse that is just, you know, maintained and stuff, they get into their 20s and stuff and they start 
like humans, they start to sort of fail here and there and be a little bit weaker and stuff. So it talks about that as well. Very, very useful. And then the last part is the appendixes. Um, and she talks about applying what you've learned and then goes through six case studies. Now, I love books that have case studies. I do case studies all the time where you, you go from beginning to end of a study of a, of a series of events and they could span a week, a day, uh, six months, a year can be a case study as well because you might take a horse that's kind of wrecked and you might take it through its paces of training, of doing body work, of changing the diet, of changing the environment, uh, changing the style of riding, changing the headgear, you know, any of the tack and seeing what makes a difference for your case study. That's exactly what it is. You have a case and you must study it. And I find these types of uh, examples very, very useful to apply as section three is all about all of the knowledge that you've got up until then, if you've retained it, and hopefully you have. So um, excellent book, excellent book for that. I'm sure there are other books out there that are pretty good. And if you have any, please let me know. I'd be happy to go kind of read up and, and see what they're about. And if they're really good, I'll buy them and read them and I'll review them here. Uh, as long as it's a good book. I don't really want to review bad books because I don't want to put out any negative uh, publicity sort of thing. So um, good books though, they'll be here all the time. Now this lady also, um, if you look on the back, it's, it's, uh, I think she does judging as well. So if you go to competitions, you're going to need a horse that has good confirmation in that area to win the ribbons. So there's lots and lots of practical reasons of why it's important to understand confirmation. Mostly though, in my opinion, health and performance of the horse. So we use a lot of this uh, knowledge in our own ability to just look at horses and see what they're doing. Um, but we're perpetually learning too. And this book has been a big help as a reference. So I thought I'd recommend it to you guys. Um, the link's below if you want to, if you, I mean, you can search it out on Amazon, but we linked it below to make it easy. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments. And um, I'll see you guys next Sunday for another book review. So thanks for watching. I hope this helps. See you guys again soon.